Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Mark. We especially welcome anyone who may be visiting with us today. We're so happy to have you here for this special Mass, the Memorial of St. Teresa Benedicta, which is also taking place during our Colorado Sacred Music Conference, first annual. Thank you so much for being here, and again, apologies for the, the miscommunication on the Mass time on my part, so we're so glad to have you here. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones and dispose of any chewing gum that you may have, and I hope you all picked up a program on the way out. Please stand. The opening processional hymn will be Jerusalem, My Happy Home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It is good to be here. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, I just want to take a brief moment and welcome warmly Bishop Skolka, who just returned yesterday from World Youth Day. So um, we're most especially honored at your sacrifice to be with us. And also the rest of my brother priests, Deacon Sean, everyone else, uh, the, the faculty for our music conference. It's really so far today been just a beautiful experience. But mostly again, welcome Bishop Skolka. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Father. Today we celebrate Edith Stein, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Virgin and Martyr. Let us pray. God of our fathers, who brought the martyr St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross to know your crucified Son and to imitate him even unto death, grant through her intercession that the whole human race may acknowledge Christ as its Savior and through him come to behold you for eternity who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, I will lead her into the desert and speak to her heart. She shall respond there as in the days of her youth, when she came up from the land of Egypt. I will espouse you to me forever. I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and in mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity, and you shall know the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall the king desire your beauty 
for he is your Lord, and you must worship him. The bridegroom is here. Let us go out to meet Christ the Lord. Oh, glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her raiment is threaded with spun gold. In embroidered apparel she is borne into the king. Behind her the virgins of her train are brought to you. The bridegroom is here. Let us go out to meet Christ the Lord. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The palace of your fathers your son shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. The bridegroom is here. Let us go out to meet Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones taking their lamps brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. 
While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God that we are here. First, a word of a congratulations and appreciation to Father Bierbaum and his team here at St. Mark's for pulling this together, especially this conference and this Mass here today. And to all of you, music ministry folks, a great appreciation to what you do for our church. You help to draw people into a relationship with our Lord through the ministry to sacred music and ministry to the Eucharist. And I am in awe of you and appreciate you and ask blessings that you trust the grace is available to you to continue on. I have apologized to our priests and deacons and music coordinators in our diocese that I'm sorry God did not send you a bishop whose talent is music. Uh, I, I can do other things. I, what I lack in music I make up for in loving and trusting our Lord Jesus, so I'll keep on doing that. But I think about when I was a youth in grade school, I played the trombone for as long as I could until the teacher and my parents decided, you don't have a gift for this. <laughs> And then in high school, my goal was to be like Harry Chapin or James Taylor, to sit on stage and play guitar and sing songs and tell stories. But I can't play guitar and I can't sing, so I tell stories instead. And then in seminary, I did four years of voice lessons with a lovely woman who at the end said, nice try. <laughs> don't ever sing in public if you don't have to. And so I'm in awe of what you do. Thank you for helping us to sing. The gospel for today is a beautiful and troubling story. So you have these ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, and the wise ones had enough oil. When the bridegroom came, they were ready. The foolish ones did not have enough oil. They asked the wise ones to share their oil, and they did not. That troubles me. Especially as an ordained minister, I'm captivated and fascinated by trying to get myself to heaven and as many people to heaven as I can. So I would willingly share any oil I have, but this oil cannot be shared. What is the oil that cannot be shared? It strikes me that possibly that oil is our own faith and our own relationship with the Lord. I can witness to you about my relationship. I can talk about it, tell you what a difference I think it makes for me, tell you how I pray and try to practice my faith, but I cannot give you my faith, and you cannot give me yours. You have to do it yourself on some level. And again, that's why I think music ministry is so important because you help facilitate an encounter with our Lord Jesus, a communion that helps each one of us develop our faith response. That's the oil that we have. That's the oil that saves. That's the oil that gets you into the banquet with the bridegroom. So I invite you maybe to consider yourself what's the next step the Lord is inviting you to in your own faith relationship with him. What is your relationship with Jesus like? And what's one more step you can take that will increase your oil and then bless your family and bless our world? Today's first reading is a beautiful reading. God entices us out into the desert so that he can create covenant with us. And I love that the image of covenant is that of a wedding. 
I think if we understood the Mass as a wedding, we might better have communion with our Lord. Those of you who are married, and as a priest I presided at over 300 weddings, to stand there with a man and woman who gave their lives to each other, received each other, and in doing so their identity changed. They became different. They are now one body, husband and wife. That kind of excitement and energy and focus is what the church draws us to in our moment of communion. Communion is not a thing. Communion is not even a person. Communion is a way of being with someone else. Our Lord Jesus invited you here today for an event of communion. We are in our Eucharistic revival, and as bishop, my desire is that we better understand that moment of communion. What a difference that makes to receive our Lord. We give glory to God, but it changes us and changes the world if we enter it readily, happily, disposed, attentive. So I'm not just coming to Mass just to get Jesus. I'm coming to Mass to have an experience of communion that changes my identity so when I leave here, I'm ready to go tell the world about it. During this time of Eucharistic revival, there's a strange story from the Hebrew Scriptures that has stayed with me. So I offer it to you. Genesis chapter 15, Abram has not yet become Abraham. God comes to Abram and says, I want you to take all these animals and I want you to cut them in half, kill them, spread them apart, and then I want you to be in a deep trance, which is Hebrew for prayer, attentive prayer to God. And while Abram is there in front of these dead animals, blood and flesh everywhere, God comes down and takes the form of a flaming pot, and God floats between those animals and comes to Abram. God promises Abram, you will have descendants more than the stars of the sky. God promises Abram he will go to another land, a promised land. God promises Abram and Sarah they'll have a child. There's a covenant that God makes. What is going on in that strange story, and what does it have to do with Eucharistic revival? I think a lot. At the time of Abram and the time of Jesus, when you made a covenant, you didn't write it down, you cut it. It's called the cutting of a covenant. So let's pretend like this tribe is trying to make a covenant with this tribe. What would you do? Your leaders would come together, decide how you're going to coexist by the terms of the covenant. Then your leader would say, bring us the best animal we have, normally a bull, an ox. And then your leader would say, hack it in half. Sacrifice it. Spread it apart. Then your leader would do what God did. Your leader would walk between the two halves. Look at the other tribe and say, if I or anyone in my tribe fails to live up to this covenant, let that happen to me. That's serious, right? Then your tribe would do the same. Biggest animal, hack it in half. If I or anybody in my tribe fails to live up to this covenant, let that happen to me. That's cutting a covenant. That's more than a contract. A contract is an exchange of goods for services. I give you 10 bucks, you mow my lawn. This is covenant. This is your wedding day. This is where you become different. You're putting your life on the line. Now take that cutting of a covenant and fast forward a few thousand years to the Last Supper. Our Lord Jesus is at a table with his disciples. He takes a piece of bread and he says, this is my body, and he breaks it in half. This is my blood poured out for you. What is our Lord Jesus doing with the disciples and with us at the Last Supper and at every Mass? Cutting a covenant with us. Now, God came to Abram, and God never asked Abram to walk between the animals. How come? God said this is an unconditional covenant. I will carry it. It can never be broken because I made the promise. God knows us too well. If we made the promise, we would last a day, then we would break it. God knows it, so God's going to hold it all. Now, when I said that once, a woman said, good, then I don't have to do anything. I said, no, God also gave us ten commandments, and then Jesus gave us one great commandment, which is really two, which is really hard to abide by. We're called to do our part in that. So at Mass, when do we break the body of Christ? It's called the fraction rite. What are you all singing, led by you all during that time? Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God. I invite you to pay attention during that, and maybe your singing and helping us to sing 
helps us to know the covenant being cut that is unbreakable and unconditional. And it's represented at every altar, at every mass. And then I love that the church invites you to come forward to take part, knowing that Jesus is the one who's broken. Lastly, I remember the first mass that I celebrated, my mass of Thanksgiving, almost 30 years ago. It came time for the fraction rite, and I held up the body of Christ, and I couldn't break it. No one prepared me what it's like to break Jesus in half. What has stayed with me from that day on is, unless and until I'm ready to let that happen to me, I don't know if I can enter fully into what he has done for us. So we let our lives be broken open for each other. We let our lives be poured out in love and service and humility of one another. And when we do that, the covenant cut by our Lord Jesus is shared with the rest of the world. So today, maybe one part of the Mass to enter more deeply, the fraction rite, the Lamb of God, Jesus here today, ready to break himself for us unconditionally out of love. What are you going to do in response? With great confidence, we offer our prayers. We pray for ourselves and for the entire world. Our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, that they may be the first to show an invincible trust in the Lord, especially in times of difficulty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world, le world leaders, that they may navigate the terrain of diplomacy with realism, but believe that God will be on their side if they follow his divine laws. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that we may approach the Lord with humility, persistence, and faith, as did the Canaanite woman, in our deep need for his mercy. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, for all those who have asked for our prayers in, the, in their urgent needs and intentions, that through the power of his holy sacrifice, they may receive healing and grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, that the Lord may quickly purify them and welcome them into his blissful heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear what we ask. Grant us what we truly need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing, Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in celebration of Blessed Teresa Benedicta win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Teresa Benedicta, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Mortem Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> 
Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, Father. Peace, Spirit. Peace, Peace, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. You have God. Blood of Christ. I am he.
O God, who bestowed on blessed Teresa Benedicta a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Again, appreciation and blessings on the rest of your conference and to the parishioners here at St. Mark's, just my continued prayers with you. You have a lot happening here. We have big dreams and we want the Spirit to lead and direct and guide us. And so just know my support um, with you. If the Spirit wants it, it will happen. So we are with you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection.